Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to show you this game from the War of the Ring 2022 League. And I'm in Tier 1, and that means I'm playing other players who have played in the League previously and have done well. My opponent for this game is Terminator Hank, who at the time we played this game was ranked number 2 in the world. And uh, I think I was ranked number 6 or something like that. But um, this is a very strong opponent. And uh, we decided we'd use two action tokens, and I would play Shadow first. So I'm Shadow, I allocated one eye, and I rolled only one muster. So obviously it's not great to only roll one muster on turn one, um, but sometimes that happens. I, I've been debating about allocating zero eyes on turn one, but I think the, the greater risk of rolling zero eyes and free people getting several movement is is a bigger risk than not rolling enough musters. I'm curious, leave a comment to say if you allocate zero eyes or one eye on turn one as shadow, or some maybe more than one eye. Okay, so I started with Shadows Moving and Lure of the Ring. Not you know, not particularly great cards, but not not bad. Swarm of bats can be really powerful if I'm going up to Old Forest Road or Dale, and I want to attack into there. Even if Free People has drawn scouts, I can take out the Northern unit in Old Forest Road. So I'm certainly considering that path forward. Okay, my opponent has Gua here, and it is possible right here with this roll to get Aragorn turn one. It particularly if you give if you give Shadow a ring. So you could use. Gua here to separate, or just a regular character die to separate, but you'd get to cycle a character card with Gandalf's power, and then move Strider, and then move uh, move Strider with the ring, and then crown Aragorn. So anytime you have a chance to crown Aragorn turn one, I think it's worth considering, and I think when you're going against a shadow that has a slow military start, I, I feel like that's even a little more appealing, because it means you might have a little more time with the Fellowship. You can go a little slower. Strider's ability to hide might not be quite as important. That said, free people would have to give Shadow a ring. And that's not great because then Shadow could get Saruman turn one. So I don't know that it's worth that trade. But because we're using action tokens, it would be possible for the free people to use the card drawing action token or the... Um, maybe the the muster action token and and temporize and and possibly have a better chance i i think that you know probably shadow would would wait and would get to see it coming but um one possibility would be you draw a strategy card turn 1 and then you have two chances to draw either fearfire foes or a Book of Mazarble, which lets you then get Aragorn turn one without giving Shadow a ring. So I don't know that it's worth using your token round one, um, but it's something to consider anytime you have a chance to use, uh, any chance, anytime you have a chance to get Strider or Aragorn turn one. Okay, um, my opponent passes, I think, and that makes sense, and I decide to get armies moving. I did get a lot of army movement, so my strategy is go up to do because that's um, Dale, Erebor, and Woodland Realm. That's do. Um, go up there because I'm going to have a bunch of movement, and then by the time I get there, I can make sure Sauron is at war. Another thing I considered was using this muster to get Sauron to war, and then march this army up north to the elves in Woodland Realm. But um, I am reluctant to spend my only muster in case then I don't roll enough musters next round. And then I wouldn't, it would be, it potentially could be hard to get um, the Witch King in round two. Uh, and that would be, that would be pretty bad, I think. So I, I think I decide I'm going to use eyes, I'm going to muster with Isengard and then get Saruman turn two, and then at some point I'll get the Witch King when I can. All right, so that's my plan. Uh, free people move safely. I continue marching my armies. I'm going to meet up outside of Lorien, and I'm going to send this army up north to um, Old Forest Road. I, I think that, yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter much between north or south Anduin Vale. Um, the Fellowship moves again and is safe again, which is obviously nice. And then I move armies again, and then they move a third time 
and um, this time they get hit, which is obviously quite likely, and get revealed. So um, they decide to go into Moria, and they lose Gandalf to a one tile, and then the extra Moria tile is zero. So obviously better for me than an I, but you know, no, no extra corruption. So, okay. And then I play Lure of the Ring here because, you know, it's often worth it to corrupt the fellowship. They're in Moria. Um, I get to, you know, on average do about two corruption here and that's pretty good for a card. So, um, I get Legolas and, uh, that's that. And then the free people use uh, Strider's ability to hide. And then I go ahead and get Isengard to war after debating a bit. And then, um, Obviously, I would very much like to see some card that messes with the Fellowship in Moria, anything, any tile drawing card, any um, the Nazgul Strike or the Nazgul Search, anything like that would be great here. So um, I allocate two eyes because I have two rerolls. I would really like to catch them. Maybe it's overly aggressive, but I feel like I could make some corruption progress against the fellowship. I roll no more eyes and I only get one muster and then the free people get no movement. So, you know, obviously it's quite bad to get no movement. If you can just make one movement a turn, you're only getting hit on sixes. It's worth it. And it's obviously not great to sit in Moria, but, um, you know, sometimes the rules do that. Um, I start by drawing character card because if I could get something to mess with the fellowship, that seemed worth it to me in this situation. And then my opponent plays file. And then I get Sauron, uh, Saruman here because obviously I want to get my extra die. I think that's pretty much required. I mean, maybe it would be nice to get um, to skip Sauron, Saruman for tur turn two and get um, Sauron to war. Um, what, what ended up happening was by getting Saruman, um, my opponent now sees three musters and then they decide to muster the elves toward war. And... Um, at that point, I think, you know what, this army in Daggerlad is not going to make it up to Woodland Realm before it has a chance to defend itself. And therefore, I switch targets to Gondor. And maybe what I should have done is leave that army muster die for a little bit more, such that if the uh, if free people decided to muster the elves, then I could use my muster to get Sauron to war and then besiege Lorien before the free people had a chance to muster more units in there. I, I don't know. I'm curious what, what you would have done here. Um, do you get Saruman right away? Do you switch to Gondor? It's not, it's not exactly clear to me what's best. I feel like it would have been so long. Um, I, giving up Saruman on turn um, two feels like a pretty high cost to me. And even if I get Lorien, then Woodland Realm is still going to be able to defend itself. Um, so, yeah. All right. So I end up switching to Gondor and then my opponent musters the elves toward war. I get a full contingent, a pretty full contingent right outside of Gondor. And um, they get the elves toward. They use the muster token. And so this is a good example of the benefits of using tokens um, so that they can use that muster action, that muster die to actually get an extra elite into Lorien so that at the start of next round, they'll even have time to get even more in there. Um Obviously, I'm not happy to see cards that don't hurt the Fellowship at all um, while they're just sitting in Moria. You know, Balrog or uh, any of the tile drawing cards. There, there are quite a few that, that I could draw. I think like six or something like that in the deck that would be helpful here. Um, okay, I only allocate one eye this time because I'm feeling a little nervous um, about um, my military attack getting going. And also, um, I feel like... The fellowship now has slowed down and therefore it could be worth it to move a little faster. Also, I know that um, my opponent is going to very likely spend a will of the West to get Gandalf this round if they roll a will of the West and therefore they're not going to be moving as much. Um, and, and so my inclination to allocate more eyes goes down if I think they're moving less. All right. Um, but I also roll one, so that's good. Very happy with that. And then, um, my opponent gets Gandalf the first round they can. Obviously, that's really nice. And they couldn't have got, got Gandalf last round because um, I didn't have Saruman yet. And I would have waited on Saruman if my opponent had had a Will of the West showing. Okay, so um, 
obviously this is a great role for uh the for for free people and um and they and they drew Emmer Hill. So that's good. Oh, and they have and they have Fairmere's Rangers here. So so that's interesting. I I wonder why okay so they start by moving i think that's definitely right because if i have a t- if i happen to draw into a tile drawing card it's good to move first um i miss them on four dice obviously it would have been nice to hit they got to roll a will of the west on four dice i could have rolled a six on four dice okay but i miss and then i get um sar into war and now here they're mustering into lorian and that's really interesting i feel like um I might have played Faramir's Rangers here with that die. Um, you know, because now Gondor is getting attacked. Um, did you really need that extra elite in there? Uh, yeah, obviously it's good to get that elite in there. And if you don't, then... Yeah, I don't know. Well, either case, I get uh, the Witch King and then... Uh, my opponent passes, and I attack into Osgiliath. I'm continuing to cycle uh, character cards in an attempt to get anything that messes with the Fellowship. Again, tile drawing card, Balrog, any of those. There's like six of them in the deck. I, um, let's count. Any of the tile drawing cards, that's three. Nazgul Strike, Nazgul Search, and Balrog. Yeah, there really are six. So my chances, my chances are pretty good here, cycling into this. Okay, but instead I draw Warren with Sauron Toil. Not bad. Uh, obviously, better to have that sooner rather than later. Um, okay, Gondor gets mustered one towards war. And then at this point, I decide to go towards Dol Amroth. Because um, I think that uh, Minas Tirith is not going to get to muster up much more before this army in South Athelion gets to Osgiliath and besieges it. And I could get Dol Amroth under siege at the beginning of next round relatively quickly because I do have Ring Racer abroad. Also, I really want to cycle into more character cards so that I can mess with the Fellowship. So this is yet another chance of cycling. Um, I play Wormtongue, which I thought about playing as the card effect, but... Um, in general, I don't. I don't think it's that. Um, it's it's typically not worth it. I think in in a in I think Lords of Middle Earth, uh, it can be more useful if you bring in the other Witch King and that and then, um, yeah. I I don't know. Maybe it's worth it in this, but I, I almost never play it. Anyway, Thal Stench and I roll a six, and um, there we go. Now Pelargir is under C is is taken, and um, my opponent obviously gets Gandalf here, and I play Ring Wraiths or Abroad. Oh, uh, as of note, I did not cycle into anything to mess with the Fellowship. So again, just um, yeah, I think that was a little bit of bad luck. I've I've drawn six character cards at this point, and none of them were. Um, the six cards, six cards that could have messed with the Fellowship in Moria. What are the chances of that? I think the chances of that are quite low. Let's do, let's do, um, let's do math for a second. So that's, um, let's see, six. So 18 out of 24 to miss on the first card that you draw times 17. So it's 18 times 17 times 16 times 15 times 14 times 13, right? That's missing on all, that's missing all six cards, six times in a row, divided by 24, divided by 23, divided by 22, divided by 21, divided by 20, divided by 19, divided by, is that the right number? 24 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. All right. 14% chance. Um, hopefully that was a pleasant statistical digression. So there's a 14% chance of missing if you, on any of those six cards if you draw six from the top of the deck. So, you know, a slightly unlucky, you know, unlucky for me, but not crazy, right? That's not 1%. 14% is, you know, that can happen. All right. Anyway, Ring Wraiths are abroad, moves uh, to Lamadon and Osgiliath, and that's that. Okay. Uh, my opponent is obviously very happy to see that I didn't mess with them anymore. And they move again here, which is 
um, interesting. I guess they need to get out of Moria one way or another. Um, now I'm very likely to hit them. I have four dice on a five and I don't reveal them. And, um, you know, maybe I should have, maybe I should have played, um, Worn with Sorrow and Toil first so that, um, you know, I could have caught them. I just, I didn't think, I didn't think they were going to move a second time, but I guess what else could they have done? So I guess that does make sense. Um, Okay, we got Gimli, and now the question is, is it worth it to play Worn with Sorrow and Toil? They're at one corruption. They're two spaces away from Lorien. If I play Worn with Sorrow and Toil, they're almost certainly going to declare into Lorien and get rid of it and heal a corruption. But maybe it's worth it because it does slow them down by a movement. And, um, you know, that seems great. I, I guess I'm anticipating that there are quite a few cards that I could... Um, play and so uh you know any of the tile drawn cards any of that stuff and so getting sort of encouraging them to go into Lorien doesn't feel worth it to me um but this is a great question would you um play so this is this is at 16 would you play worn with sorrow and toil here or something else so i decided to play uh half orcs and goblin men in this army uh down here in lamadon which you know, I, I think it's useful, but um, yeah. Okay, so uh, my opponent now declares into Parth Celebrant, and um, I allocate one eye, I roll two more, and then they get only one movement. Uh, they muster into Dol Amroth. Obviously, that's important at the beginning. I um, besiege Dol Amroth, and then they play Immerhill of Dol Amroth. Obviously, that is great that they had had drawn that so early and you know but they also could have had curtain ships so I, I was expecting that given the elves getting to war so early so I, I think either way i sort of anticipated that which is why i played the extra elite to make sure i had enough to take it over um and then i get to besiege Minas Tirith, which i'm also happy about here and um my opponent um musters once into Las Arnach. you know i think that makes sense it, it harasses me it slows things down a bit um there isn't anything particularly urgent i mean you could potentially get these units from edoras into Westmnet, just in case you don't roll um army musters in the future but you know i think while you have the chance that's good and then i play one with and toil here and um then grand and so i play desperate battle on the round that um they couldn't mess with it with something like daylight or anything else. And I think that's a close to expectation. I get three hits, they get four hits. That's about what we expect. We go to next round and um, then I play Flocks of Crabane. Uh, You know, obviously I don't, maybe this is overkill um, and maybe I should have saved this to cycle into more character cards in the future. But I wanted to make sure I take this out um, as quickly as possible so that I can then turn around with this army, make sure that this guy in Las Arnach doesn't get out of control and um, just keep things in Gondor uh, under control. So that's why I played the card, even though I'm not going to get to redraw it with the Witch King. Um, so that's what I do. And then um, I only get one hit. So I think that's a little bit below expectation and my opponent gets three. So, you know, that's now I only have one more round of combat. Definitely not looking great for for this combat, but I'm going to keep going. I get one free press again, so I might as well try. Um, and I play, again, Swarm of Bats here because, first of all, if they have some combat card, it, it'll cancel it. And also I get plus one to my leadership roll if they don't play any combat cards. So um, I play Swarm of Bats and then I get lucky to roll three sixes and that army is defeated did they have curtain ships yeah they didn't have curtain ships so obviously it would have been better for them if they were able to uh hold out longer but i i think the expectation is i would i would win that battle um given the fact that i had three cards to play and was willing to play three cards so okay um i take one hit and that's that and then they move the fellowship obviously that's the right thing to do and i miss on three dice on sixes so you know i don't have great chances but um i think that's like 60 percent chance right um, five out of six times three. Yeah. So I have a 58% chance of missing. It's only a 42% chance of hitting them. So, okay, that's fair. And, um, I draw a strategy card here. Maybe that's a mistake. 
maybe I should draw a character card here um, if my goal is to sort of mess with the fellowship. But I feel like they made it out of, at this point, I feel like they made it out of um, Moria pretty safely. They just moved again safely. Uh, they have, they're going to get to Mordor in two turns, probably. Um, I feel like it's not, my, the hunt is not going that well. And my plan now is to shift into military if I can um, get some mustering cards. New Powers Rising would be great. I have Rage of the Dunlendings, so New Powers Rising and then get Rage somewhere. I can either take the Shire. I could potentially sneak up on uh, Rivendell if uh, Free People doesn't get too many musters in a given round. So that's why I draw a strategy card, and Hill Trolls can be useful. Okay, and then my opponent also draws a strategy card, and then I get my armies moving. I think about leaving somebody in Dol Amroth in case Strider shows up with Dead Men of Dunharrow, but I feel like if Strider separates, then at that point I can retreat into Dol Amroth, but without Strider, probably it doesn't matter too much. I don't know. Maybe I should just leave one behind. Um, I was slightly worried at the beginning of next round if this unit moves from La Sarnach into Pilar Gear, then if I only have three hit points against that one, then is that really a battle I want to fight? Um, and the Southrons and Easterlings are not at war. So even though, though these guys are right here, um, they're not actually at war yet. And I don't even know if I'm going to roll enough musters to get them at war. So I think the more present danger is um, this unit getting into Pilar Gear and starting to muster up. And that's why I bring four. Um, so that's my thinking. I don't know. Maybe it's better to leave one behind. Okay, now I get Balrog, of course, and uh, King is revealed. And um, then I allocate one eye, roll two more, and my opponent only gets one movement again, but plenty of mustering. So um, they muster another elite into Lasarnach, and now I use the army in Minas Tirith to attack it. And that battle goes about as expected. They get three hits total. I get um, four hits total. And and then I have to uh, put one on to La Sarnach to take it over. Um, which is, you know, not a completely wasted move because I do eventually want to move these armies, uh, potentially, depending how this battle goes, up to Rohan. So uh, blocking off Path of the Woes is, is not bad by getting a unit into La Sarnach. All right, now I go ahead and get the Southrons and Easterlings to war because I'm definitely going to need these units to reinforce Minas Tirith. And um, my opponent moves and again is safe. So, you know, uh, they've, they've gotten off, I think, pretty easy given the number of eyes and rerolls that I've had, but uh, that's sometimes how it goes. All right, I get the Southrons and Easterlings all the way to war, and then they start, they muster Rohan, and um, I get my... Southrons and Easterlings ready to take out Minas Tirith. And they use army musters to get their armies in right position, so that's good. And then I use the a character die to relocate the Witch King. Obviously, I would rather be more efficient um, being able to do something like uh, Nazgul uh, Ringwraiths are abroad or Black Captain Commands and, and be more efficient with it, but um, you know, that's how it goes. Now, what I could have done is put a Nazgul on the Fellowship in Eastamnet, but the free people are already at one movement. And my thinking is if they move a second time this round, my chances of hitting them are still pretty high. That one extra Nazgul might not matter. And having this Nazgul over here can be quite useful if my plan is to take Dale. So I, I'm tentatively thinking Minas Tirith, that gives me five in Gondor, plus Edoras, Dale, the Shire, because I have uh, Rage of the Dunlendings, and this is a very flexible, this is a muster card. So it, I can play it with a muster or a palantir, quite flexible. Um, and so that's that's one, two is Dale, seven is Gondor, eight is Edoras, and then I need one more stronghold. So maybe the Woodland Realm, maybe Helm's Deep. I don't know. Um, but that's, that's my thinking, and that's why I put this one... Um, Nazgul here instead of on the fellowship. Though I did, I did think about the fellowship. Okay. Um, my opponent then use, gives me a ring to move a second time, which I think is right because they need to be able to, if possible, get into Mordor next round. And getting two movements is much more predictable than getting three movements on five dice. So um, 
I end up hitting them and they get revealed here. So that's good. It doesn't matter so much because they have Strider. Um, and this, I think, is really the power of having Strider in the Fellowship. And um, I attack into Minas Tirith. I play Relentless Assault, obviously a good a good um, combat effect. I don't really have anything else that would make sense. I'm happy to cycle um, strategy cards. And if they play something like Daylight, then I can just not use it. Now, they did play Shield Wall. And so one question is, would you now sacrifice two units or not against Shield Wall or possibly one unit? Um, so this is it, uh, 25, 30. So would you use two units for, um, Relentless Assault or not? Um, my choice was, uh, yes, I did. So I used two and now I'm going to hit on four or better. And my thinking is if I can get, you know, two or three, uh, two hits doesn't do any good, but three or four hits would be great. And I think my expectation is three at least. And so it seemed, it seemed worth it to me. Um, but I rolled quite badly on my combat roll. I only got one hit and then on my leader reroll, I got no hits. So I got one hit total and then my opponent got four hits against me. So in that combat, I just took six hits and did one to them. And now, um, this siege of Minas Tirith is going to take a lot more dice. Um, I do have hill trolls, but is Hill Trolls going to be enough? Eight hit points against five inside? I don't know. Um, it's just not clear to me if that's possible or not. So I draw into Shadow Lengthens. And with Shadow Lengthens, I think, okay, now maybe it's going to be okay. Um, all right. I also get Fighting Urukai. So this is an interesting question. What do you end up discarding? I think I discard Balrog because I think I'm just not going to go after Lorien. I could go after Lorien with Balrog, but it's quite buff. Um, and I'd rather sort of try and sneak attack uh, Rivendell at some point or um, Woodland Realm. So that's my thinking. Um, I allocate one eye and roll two more again. And then my opponent gets um, a nice roll with two Wills of the West. Uh, and this is enough movement to get into um, Mordor. Uh, I have Day Without Dawn, and then they hide with the Will of the West, which is obviously correct. And then I um, decide to play Will Day Without Dawn here. And obviously, it's not great to um, n now that fr now free people will be free to save their Wills of the West. But by spending by getting rid of this Will of the West now, they're going to have to use a ring to get in. And, um, and I feel like that's, that is worth, worth it. Um, maybe, maybe that's wrong, but I, I'm curious if you would have saved it or, uh, used it, you know, the chances of getting two wills of the West, um, or three wills of the West would be a better deal later. Uh, I, I think is, is pretty low. So, so that's why, um, okay. I, muster an elite into umbar now maybe this is overkill my plan is i'm going to um go after minas tirith i'm going to use uh shadow lengthens to get into asgiliath then i'm going to uh support support minas tirith um instead of mustering an umbar maybe i could have moved and then um use the muster to to get uh something ready for uh, Rage of the Dunlandings, but I feel like I want to make sure I take out Minas Tirith at this point, and ideally in one die, and so converting this this elite, basically this muster turns into an extra attack later because I can reduce it to um, to get an extra attack, and then if I have leftover units, I'm going to come in and attack Helm's Deep. So that's that's my plan. That's why I muster there. Okay, I then use Shadow Lengthens, and obviously I hate to use a attack die to play a card because I'm using up attacks that I others otherwise want to be using, but the nature of the roll is that's what I got. I only got attacks this round, so it's fine. Um, I bring everybody from Umbar to Osgiliath, and then I think about how many to bring from Lamadon into Osgiliath. And the question is, Strider is still around, Dead Men of Dunharrow is in their hand. So it's possible if I bring everybody from Lamadon into Osgiliath, then my opponent could use his character die to separate Strider into Eastamnet. 
and then use a ring to play Dead Men of Dunharrow coming into Lamadon, and then, like, Dol Amroth is just free for the taking. And that's going to, obviously, that's going to slow down the, the fellowship, but also it's going to completely slow down my military. So I was... I was worried about that. I ended up leaving one unit behind in Lamadon so that if my opponent separated Strider, that I could retreat this unit from Lamadon into Dol Amroth. And at least then I could turn around these armies and, and come attack. It would waste some time, but it wouldn't waste as much time. So that's that's my thinking. Um, my opponent moves, but now now I'm not as worried about Dead Men of Dunharrow, but I had sort of already had to commit to it at that point. And they move safely again. Um, which obviously is not great for me. And um, though it, pr- it probably didn't matter too much since I don't have anything nasty to play on them. Uh, and then my other army movement is getting this army in Eastern ready. And then they um, move again. I catch them and they get revealed with a two and then draw a three. And they take a random companion here and they get Boromir. Or first, they think they're going to lose Strider, which confused me. And then um, they end up losing losing Boromir. And um, that triggers one with Sauron Toil. Obviously, it's much better for them. Boromir is really the perfect, perfect pick here for them because um, that leaves Strider to be able to hide. And um, it doesn't trigger an extra... The, Boromir is always going to cause Warren with Sauron Toil to... Uh, but but if you lost a hobbit here to to a random companion, then um, Warren of Sauron Toil would trigger an extra time. So um, you know they they have dead men and and Guahir. They're not too worried about losing one of those, but it's sort of a future card loss that they're avoiding um, by not losing a hobbit here. So that's that's really perfect for them. Um, and then I play give it to us obviously it would be better and and that was that was a misplay it would have been better to have some card that messed with them more but you know it's not bad to get a red tile in um that was a misplay on my part what I should have done was uh use this other die first I did not I I had forgotten temporarily that they had um strider as their guide because they lost strider and put it back so um because strider is guide they can now very safely hide using this die because I have no character cards left in hand. And had I just done that in a different order, then they wouldn't probably, they wouldn't have risked hiding because maybe I had a tile drawing card. Um, so, you know, at this point, I feel like the fellowship is going in pretty even money. Um, you know, they have, they're at zero, uh, effectively zero corruption because they have Strider and two hobbits. Um, the hunt pool is, you know, we'll see what it is in a second. But I, I wish that I had just done that in the in a different order. I had I just made the mistake because I didn't realize Strider was guide. Okay, um, I go ahead and attack into Minas Tirith. Uh, no, I wait to attack in Minas Tirith. I move this army to Parth Celebrant, and maybe that's a mistake. Um, I wanted to get this army in place to attack uh, Helm's Deep, and I feel like I need to plan on winning next round if I can. Uh, it's going to be, I mean, obviously I won't be able to win next round unless I get a really good roll, but um, maybe in two rounds, you know, it would be great to be able to win in two rounds so that if they go slow in, in Moria, in Mordor, that I'll be able to win in two turns. So I think that this army will help take out Helm's Deep. That's my plan. Um, maybe it would have been better to attack into Minas Tirith here while I had the attack die. I was a, I didn't have any good cards to play, and so I thought, better to wait one round. I need to move this army to um, Vale of Karnan anyway to be able to threaten Dale. So, I don't know. It's, it's not entirely clear to me what was best there. Note that I draw Orc Patrol here. So b- way back when I drew a strategy card instead of a character card, you know, maybe it's still worth it to try and draw more character cards. Um, my opponent gets There's Another Way. Obviously, that's great. Um, and now this is what the pool looks like in Mordor. So, you know, pretty fair pool. It feels about balanced. Um, I, um, allocate one eye. I could allocate more here potentially. Um, but I'm just, I'm worried that my military is going to be a little too slow. So I only allocate one. Maybe it's a mistake. I, I roll one extra. Um, and then... Um, they get this great roll. And obviously they're very happy that Day Without Dawn has already been played. The odds of rolling, you know, three wills of the West are pretty low. 
Um, so I don't really regret having played it, but obviously this is just great. You know, if they can move this much and have that much flexibility is really good. Um, they start by moving right away because maybe I'd have a red tile and they get it too. So that's very pleasant. They lose a random, um, companion and they lose Strider. And that's interesting. I, I, I almost would have rather they get a, um, Hobbit, because then I would pull another character card, um, and it would be that much more likely that the Fellowship gets revealed. Now, something like this one, well, I guess one reveal is still going to reveal them, and the um, zero reveal is still going to reveal them, so I guess it doesn't matter that much with this particular pool. Um, but, you know, that's obviously a good start to not get revealed. Um, always nice. Okay. Um they lose and they didn't, I did not get there is another way. So th there were two chances that they took random companions when I had, um, Warner Sauron and Toilet play that they, that they didn't get a Hobbit, which is good because now they were able to keep there's another way. And that's going to be a very useful card for them later once they get Gollum. All right. They move again and, um, get a one. So, you know, that's just, that's just great. They've gotten two good tiles and, um, yeah, can't can't do much better than that. And again, they didn't get revealed. So they, um, not that reveals would have mattered that much given the dice that they had, but still they're, they're going to get to put these dice to other uses. Um, okay, I attack Minas Tirith here and I um, play a character card because I want to cycle into um, maybe something that's going to mess with the Fellowship more at this point. I, I don't know, more red tiles. Um Breaking the Fellowship, maybe it's worth saving when Gollum shows up. Um, I feel like, yeah, what card What card would you play here? Shadows Gather is obviously a powerful combat effect, but I want to um, use it to merge up this army into Helm's Deep. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe Breaking is worth saving to do the extra corruption, you know, one, two, three points, three movement, possibly, you know, three damage ish. It depends if I hit the red tile or not. Um, if they hit an eye, it's hard, it's hard to know how much damage is going to be done. Um, maybe it's worth saving breaking. I ended up playing breaking here, um, as a combat card. Let's see what, um, yeah. What would you play here? What combat card would you play? I'm curious. I'm just making a note so I can leave it in the notes. Um, leave a comment. What combat card would you choose here? All right. I played Bringing the Fellowship and um, ended up still getting two hits. They didn't get any. And now I press and uh, don't get any hits and they get two against me. But then I press again and there was that elite that I had in there to get to press again and then finish finish them off. So, you know, I think that combat went pretty well for me. Um it would have been very reasonable for that to take extra, um, you know, one or two attacks extra. I would say that was pretty good. Uh, and I did draw this three red. So, so that's nice. They move again here. So they've gotten three movements at the beginning, uh, of Mordor. That's obviously quite good. Now I draw an eye, they take, uh, four damage and, and now it's like, okay, that's a game, right? That's, that's four, they're four away. Um, particularly if I play something like, um, here's the hunt pool. I can play orc patrol here and potentially get them. So, you know, the, obviously I don't, I don't really, uh, want to draw an eye, but there are quite a few tiles I'd be happy to draw with orc patrol. So, um, I play it here and again, maybe should have saved, maybe should have saved breaking and I could have played breaking here and then orc patrol next after they hide. Um, but this way they can't use Gollum's ability to reveal and reduce corruption because they're already revealed. Um, I end up drawing a zero. So, you know, if I had drawn a three there, that would have been great. Um, so my calculation was, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six tiles are good. Um, three tiles, obviously the eyes are very bad and, you know, I don't want to draw the red one stop, but still that is one corruption if I draw it. So, um, that is what happened. Drew a zero. 
Okay, uh, my opponent hides, and uh, then I get my armies moving, and they consolidate into Helm's Deep. And, and I think the fact that they were able to have enough dice to do all of this movement in Mordor and hide and still consolidate armies in Helm's Deep, that was the benefit of the initial two movements not revealing them. Um, you know, they just it just gave them extra dice. Okay, uh, I obviously get the mouth, and then I use my ring to play the red tile because if they hit the red tile, I feel like I have decent chances of winning. Um, though maybe I should have just attacked into Helm's Deep. My plan is next round use Fighting Uruk High and uh, go after the Shire and Dale, and um, I think I can probably do it. It's a little tough. Um, I need to also take Edoras. So I don't know. It feels to me like the chances of them having enough movement next round are pretty high. And therefore, I need to add a red tile in there to try and slow them down or corrupt them. And uh, that's my plan. So I move. Rohan gets close to war, but not actually at war. And obviously, this isn't great if they have an Ent, because I won't be able to play Fighting Urukai. Um, but... I need to have an Isengard unit anyway in Helm's Deep to be able to play Fighting Urukai. And so the other option is to move like one elite into Fords of Aizen. But um, that just feels too lame to me. So I'm just risking that they don't have Ents. And, you know, that is what it is. Now, uh, they do have Ents. And, uh, you know, that happens. I did discard a couple of character cards with Warren with Sauron and Toil. So... Okay, and they haven't drawn that many. They, they've only drawn um, eight cards at this point. All right, and then they get We Prove the Swifter, which is just beautiful, right? That's going to be really great for Gandalf getting into Helm's Deep. Um, they can do uh, Ent into We Prove the Swifter or Ent into There is Another Way. Obviously, this is a very good situation for free people as best you could hope for. Um, all right, and then they get this just beautiful roll. Um, it's going to be very tough for me to win this turn, but obviously I need to try. And basically my only chances of winning are they draw a red tile and, um, and then, um, you know, I have enough military power to win. All right. So maybe, yeah, so maybe the right answer, maybe another idea, just let me, I'm gonna. I'm a little nervous to go back because it might mess everything up um, with the card draws. But I'm curious if we go back. I'm just gonna rewind. This could be. This could mess everything up. We'll see. Um, here in this moment, instead of instead of moving into Fords of Eisen, right? I moved. I moved into Fords of Eisen here. Instead of doing that movement, that was an attack die. It's showing an eye because I had already rolled. But um, I wonder if I had attacked Dale. And then maybe this army in um, Vale of Karnan would have been enough to take out the Woodland Realm. Or instead of even bothering to play that red tile if I had attacked Dale in Woodland Realm, uh, maybe, that, maybe that would have been the way to go. Um, yeah, I might have had better chances with that. Okay, that's something to that's something to think about. Feel free to leave your comments on that. All right, let's see if I if I mess things up by undoing that. No, it worked fine. Okay, so I got back to the current present moment. I ended up trying to go after Rohan, hoping that there are no ends, hoping that I'll get to play um, fighting Uruk High, but they have an end. So, you know, that's that's sad for me. Um, and uh, there goes there goes Saruman, and they have theirs another way, so they get to heal one, and I draw three. You know, the three is good. Uh, I'm happy to do that corruption. That's almost as good as an eye. Um, and they do reveal um, using Gollum's power, which I think is right, and because they just they just got plenty of movement. Their their dice rolls in Mordor were excellent. Um, I besiege Helm's Deep, and then um, they draw a card. Again, just lots of all the cards they need. And um, 
I play Shadows Gather here, which is an efficient way of taking Edris and getting into Helm's Deep. Uh, I leave by one behind and fold so I don't overstack. And then they um, play We Prove the Swifter. Obviously, I'm not happy at all to see Gandalf show up when I have all those Nazgul there. And um, now my situation is I need all of these dice to win. Um, my plan is I will um, use Rage of the Dunlandings. Obviously, this is an example of using a muster to be able to um, effectively move armies. And, you know, I had a ring, so it, it, it wasn't exactly necessary with this die roll. But, you know, if I had one more muster, if I had rolled three musters, then this would have been quite important. Okay, so Rage of the Dunlandings, and then um, I move armies. I get this army close, you know, closer to Helm's Deep, just in case. And then I'm outside of the Shire, and I attack into the Shire and win that battle. And then my opponent hides, and I attack into Dale and win that battle. And now... It would be uh, great if my opponent has to wonder whether or not I'm going to take out Helm's Deep. There is some chance, it's unlikely, but there is some chance that I could take out Helm's Deep. Um, but because we're using action tokens, they use an action token right here. They draw a card, happens to be an Ent, perfect timing. And um, now they get to see whether or not I'm going to take Helm's Deep. And then if I take Helm's Deep, then they'll move and try and destroy the ring. But if they can wait until next round to move, then these eye tiles, instead of being deadly, might become um, safe. Because right now, they only have a five out of nine chance, uh, sorry, a four out of nine chance of destroying the, the ring. If these eyes become safe for them, that's a huge swing. All right. Um, so this is, I, you know, and I think this is fair. This is just a way of balancing the game for, for the free people. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's too helpful. Maybe we should have only used one, one token instead of two. But um, this is what happens when you have two tokens. So I have to make my attack. I think they probably wouldn't have moved. Um, and they just would have hoped that Helm's Deep held, particularly when you have Gandalf there, you have Horn Dark, you have a, you have Daylight. I mean, there are Shield Wall. There are a lot of good cards here to defend with. Um, so it's probably going to hold. I start off with um, Swarm of Bats, um, canceling whatever they had, plus hoping to draw into something big. Um, and I get one hit only. Um, you know, that's about what you'd expect. It's actually slightly better than what you'd expect um, when you don't have any leadership and you're only hitting on sixes. Um, they get two hits against me, which doesn't really matter too much. Uh, I press and I have an onslaught. So my hope is just get two or three hits here and then onslaught for a bunch. Um, they play shield wall, which I think is correct. I get one six and they get two hits, which doesn't really matter. And then I onslaught for everything and get only one hit, which, you know, the chances of getting four hits there are very low. Um, and it makes sense that Gandalf held. If I had two more dice, I could move from West Net into Helm's Deep. And then from Helm's Deep, um, you know, I could, I could take it. And then they would be forced to move this round. So even if I had managed to take Helm's Deep, they still would have had a chance to win the game by moving this round. But given that Helm's Deep did not fall, they have a chance to wait. Um, and they play Elven Rope just to give themselves even better chances next round. And um, they'll hope that I don't roll two eyes. And just out of curiosity, yeah, so I've been pretty even on eyes this, this game. I allocate one, and unfortunately for me, I only roll one more. So now... All of the eyes are safe for them. The only things that will stop them are the red tiles, and even that, they won't instantly lose the game. Um, they think for a second, and um, they move right away because they properly say, um, you know, if you wait, you could use a ring to turn one of your dice into an eye, and then all of a sudden, all those eyes become deadly. So it's absolutely correct that they move here. I, I would say the only reason possibly to not move is... Um, if you had Mithril Coat and Sting, but even then, um, I think it's probably better just to move because the, the three doesn't kill you and the one doesn't kill you. It's not like you lose the game, even if you run into the reds. So, um, because you can use Gollum's ability on the three tile because it does not reveal you and therefore they'd be at 11. Obviously that wouldn't be great, but okay. So they have a, uh, 
an 80% chance of winning right here. And um, I draw an I, which is, uh, you know, a successful tile for them. So, you know, maybe if I had breaking the fellowship, maybe if, you know, things had gone slightly different with a hunt, um, this is a very, very close situation. Um, obviously, my opponent played really well. Um, I think that I played reasonably well. Um, maybe, you know, my biggest question is the worn with sorrow and toil. Maybe I should have done that anyway, so that um, I would have tempted them into declaring to Lorien, which would have slowed them down. Um, and maybe against Shield Wall in Minas Tirith, maybe don't, um, maybe don't spend two units in that situation. So I don't know what was best. It was a, it was certainly a close game. In the end, they had 80% chance of winning. Um, if I had been a little faster with the military, the hunt, the final movement would have been a little closer, but, um, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Let's look at the statistics. Uh, so these are correct. I'm not sure why sometimes these get reversed. Um, you can see they were plus five on will of the West, but minus four on character movement. So, you know, that was pretty balanced. Obviously the wills of the West in the end were, were quite useful. Um, I, was pretty good on army movement. That was, that was great. Um, you know, a little low on sixes. They were, they were pretty high on their combat rolls against me. Um, but I would say overall, overall the luck was, you know, pretty balanced and, um, it was, a it was a fun game. I believe that this game put my opponent to the number one all time um, uh, uh, all time ladder, so I believe they are now rated number one in the world. Congratulations to Terminator, Han Terminator Hank for a, a good win and being uh, number one uh, in the world. So great game, and uh, that was our league game number one. And I look forward to our rematch for league game number two. And I will give you ongoing coverage of the uh, tournament. And round two should be starting um, this Sunday. Thanks so much. Have a good rest of the day.